All right, so welcome back. Here we're gonna take a look at a demo of using mini MVCS, which is an architecture for Unity, and using it along with UI Toolkit. So this is part of a course that's available for pay, MVC architecture for Unity. It covers model, view, controller, and the link is below. You can find out more about the course, see if it's for you, watch the trailer for it as well. Here, we're gonna be talking about more content that's added on top of the experience. So in the core course, we cover Unity, software design, all different aspects, mini MVCS for Unity, which is one particular framework that I recommend, and all the different sample projects along with it. What I've done, what I've done here is added even more demos. The course recently reached six or 7,000 students, which I'm super excited about. So I've added lots of new content on top of it. And what we've got here is one demo about using UI Toolkit. So UI Toolkit, if you don't know, it is the newest. It is now in Unity 2022 and beyond the default UI that comes in, uh, not in a package, but built in. And it's not the most popular yet. Unity UI continues to be pretty popular. It's been around for five, six years but UI Toolkit is an incredibly powerful new system for doing all your UI. So we're just gonna take a look at an example here of using UI Toolkit in the mini MVCS project. So let's take a look here. Here we are inside the project, and this is the mini MVCS free repo that is available on Git. There's a link in the chat, link below that you can take a look at. And in it, you can click the samples and import the samples here and follow along. Now that's already been done here for the sake of this demo. And we can see here in the more folder, we've got all sorts of different stuff. And the very last, the 10th one that we're gonna uh, have covered in the series is the mini, uh, mini incorporated with UI toolkit. So here I've got, let's look at all the different uh, stuff we've got. We've got a resources folder that's got some stuff inside of it. We've got the scene, which I'll run in a moment. And then we've got the source code. Notice the source code in best practices for mini. It is divided into controller, model, service, and view. So let's go ahead and run the mini. Load that up. And let's take a look at playing this example. So here we have UI. If you're not familiar with UI Toolkit, you may think, oh, this is created in the normal use Unity UI. But let's take a look at how it's structured. So each of these elements here is a button. And notice that they have a consistent mouse over. Really nice. And I'll click a hair button and it changes his hair. Click a face button the shirt button, it's just stepping through some different graphics. The body itself can change, you can randomize, and you can reset to the original. Now, the entire UI here is created in UI Toolkit, so we'll take a moment and look at that, and then we'll jump in and we'll focus on the, the mini experience. So let's look at the scene structure here. So here in the world, let me close this up. Yeah. So here in the world, we just have the main camera and the light. Nothing too exciting there, so I just put them in that empty world object. Then we have the view here, which is the UI toolkit view. We'll look at that in a moment. And then we have the example for the mini itself. So there's two parts to showing this demo here in this video. There's the UI toolkit part and then the mini part. Now, actually, if you're familiar with Mini, there's really nothing new happening here um, as far as how that structures work. So we will take a dip in there, but the interesting thing here that's kind of new for a lot of Unity users is just how the UI is set up. So what I do here is I have a UI document, which is right here. And UI document is a core Unity class. Uh, let me pop myself over here for a second. The Unity UI is a core uh, class, part of UI Toolkit, and it takes a visual tree asset. So if we look at our project here, 
Mm -hmm. I already lost where I clicked that. Click. Uh, click. There we go. So in this UI Toolkit mini demo, there is a UI Toolkit folder, and it has some settings in it. It has the cascading style sheets, which are called USS. It has the UI Toolkit layout. Now it's the layout that determines what's on the screen. Now I have other videos linked below and you can take a look at how UI Toolkit works, how and why it's super cool, how it's based on uh, web standards like CSS, HTML, and JavaScript. But let's just open this up so you can take a quick look. Make it full screen here, I'll click this. There we go. So we can see here, let me see which side is better for me to be on. I'll pop back over here. So you can see here, it looks kind of like the whole Unity editor here in what we're looking at, but this is actually one layout window inside Unity because the UI toolkit system and its UI builder window here has lots of information. We've got all the different styles represented on the left. We've got a hierarchy of the structure here that is just the hierarchy of the view. You can see we can click across all the different items. Remember, if I click preview here, I can see the different mouse over states. Let's just take a quick peek at what are the benefits of using USS. If I wanted to change this from getting bigger and turning blue as we mouse over, what if we wanted it to go smaller and green? Just for an arbitrary example. I've got a style here for when the button hovers. And if I go down here to the color, I'll change it green. And then I go down to the transform and I'll change it to 0.98 and 0.98. So now I'm going green and smaller. Now let's do the preview again and mouse over. Now look, all of those consistently change their over states. Now doing the same thing in the traditional Unity UI system is very possible, but it has never been more easy to have templated effects that go over the pseudo states of mouse hover, selected, et cetera, built in. Very, very nice. So the point there is that that system is super cool, but we're not gonna go into depth with that. Let's now take a look at, let me pop back over here. Pop back over here. We'll take just a minute here and go through how the mini is set up. So in that scene, we create some of the mini concerns. We create the context, the model, the service, and the controller. Now, as we've seen in a lot of other demos in the course, and you can watch different videos on YouTube about this that I've covered, the controller is really the glue that brings it all together. So let's take a look at how that works. So here what we do is we initialize and we say, hey model, maintain an int that represents the index of which hair we've got on. And it'll be zero, one, two, three, four, depending on the hair. For the face, for the shirt, for the body. So all of those different elements are stored in the model and we listen to them here. And anytime the model says, oh, the user has advanced which um, body to, to use, we just grab the next reference to a sprite and we use that there. Then down here, anytime the view changes, so if we click the hair button, then we're going to handle that the hair button has been clicked. Anytime the face button gets clicked, we'll handle that stuff here. So we're handling changing things, uh, affecting the rendering of the view and also listening back. Then down here, let's just see what happens anytime we click any of the uh, buttons here. We go down here and we change the different value that is stored inside the data model. So if you click next hair, please, then it updates that inside the model. All right, so that's it. There's one thing that I did wanna look at here, which if I go back here and I see that when I create the view, uh, I don't create it here actually. Yeah, do I took a view. So here we have a public property for each of the buttons in that UI. Now, typically you would have these be serialized fields for each button in Unity UI, but we're gonna do something uniquely different here because we're using UI Toolkit. 
UI Toolkit has a query language where you can type .q and get any named element. And if you want it strongly typed, you can do .q, button, and then give it the name you want. So you can see here in that syntax that I'm able to get at the hair button. Now let's just look, double check where that's named. That's named in the layout itself. So when I brought up that big window and showed how everything is designed there, then uh, they, you give them your own custom name and here I use it. Now, sometimes you'll see them named like hair button, like that, borrowing from kind of a uh, web world, web standards way, but I continue to use yeah, the, the, the Unity naming that I like. Like that. So that's really the only other thing I want to show. Let's run the scene again. There we go. So I click hair, I click face, click shirt, click body, click the reset button, and everything works there. So it looked a little bit jittery there, uh, but I think it's working really great. So thanks very much for watching this video, and that's it.